Am I? Am I cool? All right, let's uh, let's stick with orange for this video. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Ashona. Welcome back to my game engine series where we now have some colorful lights in the room to play with. Let me know what color you guys want to see in the comment section below. So we're right in the middle of implementing an entity component system. If you guys didn't see the first video in which we kind of took an introduction to this specific library that we'll be using, then it'll be linked up there and you can check it out. Uh, today, we're going to be continuing on with uh, talking about entity or ent which is the library we'll be using, as well as talking about how entities are going to be fitting into all of these components. Because so far we'll, we've been talking a lot about different components that we can actually have as part of our um, like scene, I guess, but we need to also talk about the entities. So uh, let's, and I always do this so unprofessionally, let's fade into um, <laughs> the view here and we're gonna take a look at uh, all the stuff that we've got inside the scene class. So um, I don't think we could even run anything last time, which is why I didn't commit anything. Today, what we're actually going to do is we're gonna try and get an entity onto the screen that actually renders something. And that is our task for today. I think that um, instead of just talking and showing you examples, which is what I did last time, now that we have a pretty concrete, uh, I guess, set of um, skills, I was gonna say, but now that we have some information about the library itself, we can actually begin using it for its intended purpose. So what we're going to do is um, we're gonna go into sandbox. At the moment, the thing that runs, I believe is the sandbox 2D, yep, right over here. This is now going to be, we wanna convert this maybe, like we're rendering a few different things here. If I, um, I don't know, this stuff doesn't compile, but I think everything else should. So if I just run this as a good starting point, um, okay, so much stuff going on here. Uh, quick, quick little hot tip here. Maybe I should move. You know what? Because we're all friends here, let's, uh, let's just dynamically just move this in the middle of the video. That's fine. That's professional. What I can do is I can go with more of like a streamer setup. <laughs> As you can see, I'm preparing for streaming on Twitch. Um, I can maybe move my face over here. I don't know. Let me know what you, what, what you think about the face cam. Um, I can move it down here, but then that's just like, I don't know, it's covering up the time and that's really important for you guys to see as well as other things. Maybe I'll leave it here in the middle because there's nothing really going on in the middle, but it might be really annoying for you guys to, to actually um, uh, watch this. I don't know if it's going to get annoying because like, for example, right here, you can't even see half it. No, nah, that's stupid. I'm doing a complete 180 on that. Let's maybe put it, um, I'll leave it at the top. Let me know where you want the face cam. <laughs> okay, so uh, my point though with that, and I'll try and make sure that this fits in here, is that it's really important that you actually take a look at the output window. If you're still using the, and I'll just leave this here so that you guys can see it well. If you are still using the error list, which is this thing, right? Um, which I'll also put over here. If you're still using the error list, you should stop that immediately. Because, I mean, it's not bad to just get a quick overview as to what's going on. But you can see that, like, I mean, this is telling us get is not a member of ant storage. It looks like the actual, uh, like, error, if we double click on it, takes us to ants code. Which, as you can see, like, I mean, obviously, obviously the code inside ant will compile. Except it won't in this case because it's templated code and we're actually, get, we're actually somehow providing something that doesn't work. And so it can't generate the template and so we get the compile error. This kind of stuff is, um, you know, is is stuff that is extremely difficult, if not pretty much impossible to debug just by reading the error list. So if you go to the output instead, because what happens is the error list basically pauses the output text and then tries to display some stuff here. But a lot of the times, especially with templates, it displays complete garbage here that is like, you know, I mean, it's the first line of the whole error message, basically. So if you go back and you can see, you, you look at the output, you'll see that we tried to compile scene.cpp. And then you can see here that um, it failed because get is not a member of this like storage mesh component, whatever class, I guess, with ant, uh, entity equals entity. So that's just telling us what the actual um, entity template parameter here is set to. And then you can see that we have another message saying, see declaration of this, see ref, blah, blah, blah. Eventually it of course will come down to our code. And this is where our error message is actually coming from. So scene CPP line 54, it says see reference to function. Okay, it doesn't even matter really. If we double click on this, it's going to take us to the actual code, which is this over here that caused the issue. 
And then we can try and like debug that or do whatever we want with it and see what the problem was, okay? So it's important that you actually take a look at this because if you don't, then it's going to be pretty much impossible to debug this. Um, and then we have some tuple issues here, um, blah, 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 blah. And again, it's gonna probably come down to template parameter, illegal use of type void. I don't even know exactly what's wrong with this line because just from the top of um, uh, like, from the top of my head, well, I don't even know if that makes sense, but anyway, it looks fine to me. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. I think group dot get transform component mesh component entity. I must just be misusing the API, maybe. Um, I don't know if group dot get is a thing. Actually, I'm beginning to suspect that it's because the mesh component is super weird and is kind of empty. But if we give it a default constructor. How will that change anything? Okay, so this is a very weird issue here. So I basically what I did is I added a default constructor to it, which probably isn't even the problem, but I added some actual data to it. I think because what happens potentially is if the class is completely empty, it seems like it tries to like replace it with a void or something. And to be honest, I have no idea where that's coming from. It might be coming from the way that the tuple class actually works inside the C++ library. I'm not sure, but basically if you have an empty component, that's, I guess that's treated like an empty struct is treated as a special case and it does not compile. So you need to make sure that you have some kind of uh, data inside there. And as you can see, if you do, everything works. Anyway, that is weird. And that's obviously not something that we would actually encounter in the real world because we would never have a component that has nothing in it. But if we run this, um, you know, everything everything should work and, and that's kind of, that's great. Um, but anyway, so the reason I wanted to open this is just to kind of see this scene. Okay, so we have these kind of red squares. Let's try and actually add them in as entities and maybe, I mean, I'm not sure how much this is going to work to be honest, because it's kind of one of those things that I feel is either all or nothing, meaning you either convert the whole scene to work like this, or you you don't do any of it. Like, I don't think we can partially get this to render, um, at least, uh, well, we can technically, but that would be kind of hacking it. Um, but anyway, so our, that's kind of our goal. Our goal is to kind of um, maybe create like an entity class. Um, and in fact, we might even talk more about entity classes next time. At the moment, we want to actually see this in practice. And I'm going to add an on update function uh, with a time step to the uh, to the scene. Where is time step? Is it just in here? Um, I'm going to add an on update function with a time step to the scene. And then we're going to call that obviously every frame. And then we, we have the opportunity to actually do some rendering and stuff here if we wanted to. So the way that we'll set this up is, um, and this will kind of be our test, right? So inside editor layer, which is actually where everything happens. Sorry, I was in sandbox saying everything's coming from sample example layer and all that stuff. I forgot that we were actually um, inside the editor. That's okay. I've recovered. I've remembered. Um, let's go over here and um, maybe include hazel.h. Let's include hazel slash scene slash scene.h. I'll just do it here. Um, doesn't really matter where. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say ref scene, m scene. This is going to be like our active scene. Might even call it active scene. And then over here, I'm just going to create an act. We'll create a scene. Um, I think the API for that is create ref. It's a little bit different in Hazel Dev because we've actually got our own ref, ref uh, reference counting system. So sometimes I need to take a second to remember how all this works. Um, so we'll create a scene here. And then what I want to do obviously is, and this API doesn't really exist yet, but I'm going to want to, uh, I'm, I'm going to create all my entities here. Why do we have hazel colon colon everywhere? Let's just quickly get rid of all of that. I think that was because um, we copied this from sandbox and that didn't have the hazel namespace. This obviously does. So uh, inside our rendering code, which I think at the moment, does it really happen? No. Okay. So where do we render stuff at the moment? It's here, isn't it? Um, and we bind our frame buffer. Okay, this stuff needs to be slightly reworked, but whatever, we'll do it here. So what I kind of want to do is inside update, we'll 
we'll just pretend that we do it here. We'll say active scene on update and then the time step. This is where we're going to update our scene, update scene. And obviously all the rendering is gonna be submitted and like will happen from here as well. So that's important. At the moment we're doing it from this editor layer, which obviously is not correct. We want it, We want to be rendering from the scene. The scene is what needs to be rendered. Um, so we'll do, uh, so, so that's where that gets called. But then over here, I want to also be able to create entities, obviously. So usually the way this works is you tell the active scene or you tell, you tell a scene, I want to create an entity like inside you, an entity belonging to the scene. So usually um, I'll write something like create entity and then that will return that will return usually an entity for me, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, but ultimately, what I want to do here um, is have some kind of function, which again we'll do this without like making we'll do this like one step at a time. I have to remember that this video is does not need to like I don't want it to be too long. Um, but ultimately, what we would eventually have is some kind of entity create entity function that returns an entity type, which we'll create in the next video. Um, and we'll talk about how that is going to work and what that's going to enable us to do and how it's going to make our lives easier. But for now, it's going to return an ent entity, which again is temporary code because we don't want to be really, we don't want to be returning anything to do with ent to our client, which in this case is the editor layer. Um, it should be completely 100% Hazel's API apart from like GLM. Um, so, uh, so this is temporary basically, but it's just going to let us do stuff um, and also uh, it's going to let us explore ent a little bit better. So create entity. Um, yeah, okay, let's just implement this. So again, this will do, this will basically, for the basics of this, it'll return registry create. So we now have an easy way to create an entity. We just call this function and then we get an entity back. I can just do auto entity like that. This is gonna be like one of our, one of our red squares. So the idea now is I want to add a component to this square. I want to add two things. A transform component is obviously something that's very useful. I probably want to call the entity something. So there should, there should be something like a tag component, which is essentially going to function as the entity name. And then I also want to give it maybe like a sprite renderer component or something that will just tell it, hey, render this as a sprite, render it as a red square. So to accomplish all of that stuff, and we'll go through end here, but to accomplish all of that, we need some components, obviously, because the components are uh, the actual like data that will tell our systems what to actually do. Or rather, you know, I mean, during our kind of scene update, we're, we're going to just take a look at all of the like sprite render sprite renderer components, get all the transform components from all those sprite renderer component enti entities as well. And then that way we can actually render a scene. Um, because we'll be able to go through all of the sprites and render them at the given location, locate then lo and the location is provided by the transform component. Okay, so to make all of that happen, um, let's go ahead and inside this scene um, folder, I'm going to make a new uh, components. I'm gonna make a new file called components.h. I'm gonna put all of the components in one and I'll zoom in, I'll try and zoom in more. I know people have been asking me to. So we'll try and do this at like 250% zoom or so. Um, I might by habit just zoom out. And if I do, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try and make an effort to actually stay at this zoom level at least. Um, so inside here, we're gonna have all of our components. So we'll have transform component. I do like to actually call them, you know, X component. Um, so I like to have the word component in them. And the reason is that if it's just transform, if it's just mesh, like that might be good for like the C sharp API, but even that's debatable. Um, you know, for scripting languages, even like I like to have the word component in there because that way it's not an actual like mesh, it's a mesh component. That distinction is important for me. So we'll have the transform in here. And then as I described in, wow, this is so big. Let's unpin, let's pin that somehow or unpin it. Um, yeah, so this is basically what we want, right? Uh, we want we'll include GLM. Let me know what you guys think of this font size because to, to me, it's like, it's almost a bit difficult to work with. Like, look at this. Anyway, whatever. Um, so that's the transform component. Uh, that has everything uh, we would want in a transform component. Let's make a sprite renderer component. This is gonna be real simple for now. This is just going to be a color. GLM vec for color, just like that. Really, really simple stuff. Um, you could initialize this to whatever you want. So transform, we could set to mat for one. 
color we could set to, um, you know, we can set it like that, one, 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 or something like that. You know, we can actually, I wonder if I can just, just to make this cleaner, if I can just do that, that would be nice. Okay, so transform is being initialized with one, which is identity matrix, because there's a constructor for that, and then color will be initialized to one, 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 one. I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, that's just going to give us some sensible uh, defaults so that stuff doesn't necessarily need to be set all the time. Um, uh, other, this is the copy constructor, other dot color, color. I don't know why, like we don't need a copy constructor. Wait, what is this? Maybe this was wrong. Oh, this was from Matt 4. Yeah, I was going to say, like, why are we doing that? Um, this is just us being able to... I guess take in a color, it's not a bad idea, so that we can actually specify a color like this and then just do color, color. Okay, um, definitely not gonna have any of this because of course this is gonna contain much more than just a color. Um, but I guess when we create a sprite, we might want to specify a color or a texture. And then when we, when we have textures in here, we'll do that as well. And we might even do that now, um, we'll see. Okay, so now we have a few components, right? This stuff is, really simple um i will actually include uh i will actually include them here components.h in the cfp file because we'll need them here and i guess i'll go into hazel.h and actually include hazel scene components over here okay now with these components in mind um i'm gonna zoom out to like 220 is that fine? Let me know if that's fine, because like it's it's really hard to work. I'm not gonna lie. I, I mean, I'll do it if you guys want, but I need to make sure that it's even something you want first. Um, so over here, we'll do uh, and remember to add components to the registry. What I'll do at the moment, which is not really what I want to do, obviously, but what we'll do is we'll kind of return this registry. So this is temporary. We're going to be removing this code next episode. Um, but we're going to basically say ent registry, we'll just call, um, we'll just say reg, because this is so temporary. Um, and it's going to return this registry, right? We'll obviously return it by reference. Um, that's it. And then what we're going to have to do is do active scene registry, and then um, we can start doing all of our all of our ent related code for adding our components, which we obviously tested out here. So we want to do um, where is it a registry in place, and then into which entity we're we're in placing all of this. So we'll call in place. We'll say square because that's our square entity, and then we're going to in place a transform component. And then the transform component, we're going to, and this is just like the constructor here. So I can say like, you know, identity, or I can leave it blank because by default it should be identity, of course. So this is now the transform and it should be in place for our square. Now I want to actually add a sprite renderer component. So we'll do the same thing, except we'll say sprite renderer component into the square. And what are we doing? Let's set a color of, it used to be a red square. Let's maybe make it green. So I'll do zero, one, uh, zero, one. Okay. So we now have a green square. Um, now that's not happy with something. None of them match the argument list. I think it's just because we're not saying it's a vec four. Yeah. Okay. So we need to be a bit more explicit there for some reason. Um, so, uh, there we go. Maybe because it matches like what else is better than component? Like, I don't know. I guess cause it could, could be this maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Um, okay. That's it. That's it. That should be enough for us to now render a green square. Okay. And that's it. That's all we do. We add it to the active scene. We set up its components. Obviously this API will be changed next episode. Can't stress that enough, but I want to show you how to do it through Ant as well. Now that we've done that, um, you know, when we go and render everything, which happens here, let's go ahead and just like, I mean, well, we still need to do this, I guess. Um, and remember, this is stuff that we ultimately will move into like a class called scene renderer um, in the future. But for now, you know, let's make sure we update the scene, maybe like here, um, begin scene as well, something that like, you know, let's let's get rid of all of these rotated quads and stuff like that. We'll see if we can at least draw the green thing. Um, and then, you know, this as well, this was like our like loop of stuff and like, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I don't really like 
like we don't need to be, um, let's get rid of these scopes here, profile scopes. That was just to test out the profiling system, which we're not really using at the moment. So let's get rid of this stuff. Um, cause we don't care and we want to make the code a bit more simple. So whatever renderer reset, um, stats, we'll do the update stuff here. Um, rotation, all of this stuff. You know what? Let's, let's kind of get rid of this. This exists. I'll, I'll get rid of it to clean it up, but it exists already inside the, um, inside the sandbox and, and the sandbox 2d class, I think. So we don't really need to deal with it here. We can always recover that code if we wish. So, um, so just to, uh, kind of clear things up, right? This is what we have at the moment. So the thing, the big thing that we need is we obviously need a camera component. And in fact, we might even add that now, um, just to make things a bit easier. Let's just try this first though. So I'll update the scene in between render a begin and end. Obviously not ideal, but it, that should work technically in terms of like how our code is going to run. So if I go back to scene and I go to on update, this is where the juicy code begins. So at the moment, what I kind of want is this, right? I want to actually go through a group of transform and sprite renderer components, right? As I go through transform and sprite renderer components, right? And get them and I'll get them by reference so that I'm not copying them and not doing any of that. It's not too harmful to copy them here, but obviously if we were trying to write to them, we would need to make sure we weren't copying them. Otherwise we would end up with not writing anything to the original component inside the entity. Inside the entity, of course, um, is like a figure of speech because it's not actually inside the entity. That's not where the storage is. It's an entity component system. But anyway, so yeah, so we've got a sprite renderer, sprite renderer component. Uh, I'll just call it sprite. Um, so now we can actually render it. So I can just be like renderer, draw, renderer 2D, um, draw quad. Uh, I might need to draw like a rotated quad. I don't know. Um, do we have a function that can take in a matrix? I really hope that we do, but I have a feeling we don't. We still don't. It's like the first thing you want to do. I can't believe it's not in here. Okay. Static, this is like the most important function here, which is static void draw quad. And instead of taking in a position, a size and all of that stuff, right? It should take in a GLM mass for transform. Okay, so we're drawing a quad based on a transform. Okay, um, with a color. That's all we need. This is really, really basic stuff that I am shocked that we still don't have, to be honest. Um, and then we also want this. So a version that can draw textures. Okay. So with these two armed with these two, let's create them now. Um, for like for a 2d game, you probably don't need a transform, which makes sense that that's the case, but usually obviously with engines, we tend to like transforms. So we're going to use them instead. Um, now coming over here, um, you can see that we, we have a transform that we're calculating anyway, which is why it makes sense that this stuff exists. And we probably want to rewire this a little bit to go through one code path. Um, I might do that next time. Uh, ultimately what I want to do here is actually take this, which is the thing that renders with a color. I'll copy this entire function. And again, we'll, we will consolidate this code a bit later. Um, so instead of this transform, we've got a transform, right? So that's kind of it. And you can see that's, that's really it. Actually, we just do a transform for each vertex that will have the translation rotation scale information inside it. Color stays the same and we're kind of done, right? So ultimately, um, I guess we can consolidate it now cause it's not, not that much work. If we scroll up what we, the only thing we really need to do um, inside this thing is when we figure out the transform, we need to figure out the transform and then draw quad with a transform and a color. That's it. Right. And that should work. Um, I should probably test that, but I'm going to say straight away that that should pretty much work because all we're doing is constructing a transform and then get, um, putting like the code path, giving it into that code path that takes in a transform. And, uh, that is it. So, um, the texture one, let's do the texture one as well. So I'll copy the texture one, which is this. Um, and I'll paste it into here. Isn't the texture one supposed to be, this is supposed to be underneath. 
Don't know why it's all the way up there. We'll paste that in, transform goes away, and then in the other one, the opposite happens. So transform stays, everything else goes away. Draw, quad, so we do transform, texture, tiling factor. All right, done. I think that's it. So now what we can do, now that we've extended that API a bit, is we can just draw quad transform and then sprite.color. And that's it, that's, that's, that's how easy it is, okay? Um, it's really simple. So include hazel renderer, renderer 2D to get that, and that's it. Um, now obviously begin end is something that we need to talk about. Um, but ultimately we're doing it at the moment inside the editor layer and we're just doing an update, which happens to do the whole rendering stuff. Um, but I believe that should work. So let's get rid of maybe like this, this kind of functions as our demo at the moment. Um, so I will leave this, um, as just like, you know, I'll call this like, I'll just call it, I'll just say ant example code. This is just to say writing a comment. Ant example code, okay? This is the ant example code that we can refer to as we kind of do stuff with the entity component system. I don't know, let's hit a five. Let's, this is exciting. Let's see what happens. We should just see a green square, I think. Look at that, first try. Awesome, amazing. And everything still works with our camera, everything's great. Okay, awesome, I'm really happy with that. Um, now the square color, you know, we've had this variable floating here for years and it does nothing. Let's make it do something. Let's say that the square color, let's actually point this into, and this is, this is how we can retrieve. This is a good test, um, to retrieve like components and stuff like that. We basically want this. So we'll do, um, this square entity that we have, we'll keep that. Uh, so I'll say, um, ant. Square entity. We will keep that over here. We could have assigned it later. Maybe I will just because this is a bit of a demo, and we might remove it later. It's just, it's just an, it's just a thirty-two bit unsigned int, so it's totally fine to copy and everything, of course. Um, and then we'll do uh, m active scene reg get sprite render a component from square entity dot color. And that's it. That's actually what we need. We can take a reference to that. We can stick it right in here, but to make things easier, we'll take a reference from it. So this is our um, square color. And then we'll just stick that into here. The semicolon there, stick that into here. Okay, and now we should be editing directly the color of the square and it should we should get that visual feedback and everything should be instant, right? So here it is. Oh, look at that, right? We can edit the color. This is much like my room was looking earlier, um, but we can now edit this color and everything's great. Okay. So that, um, that's, we're going to end it here. I think that is, let me just awkwardly switch back to camera. Um, that is the introduction to, this is the second introduction, I guess, into component systems. This is how everything's going to work. I hope this video was a little bit insightful for how we're going to be structuring this whole scene and entity component system and how they're going to be working together. As you can see, it is super simple. The code is not going to change from what you saw here today. The API will, but the actual underlying code that we're calling is largely going to remain the same. The biggest problem at the moment is just how we handle scene rendering because we're kind of doing half the stuff in editor layer. We're doing half the stuff inside the scene class. Um, it's not really good at all, and it's going to break if we try and do anything remotely advanced. But the actual entity component system code here, like the way that we're making new entities and adding components and retrieving components, that API is going to be improved and a bit more hazily, but it's going to more or less work in the same way. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button and also help support the series on patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you to everyone who does support the series. Don't forget you can get access to beautiful 3D stuff inside Hazel dev, <laughs> inside Hazel dev. Um, and also access to like live streams where I develop this stuff. And, um, you know, if you're interested in jumping ahead and you want to 
You want to maybe challenge yourself and have a go at actually taking this existing public code and trying to implement the entity component system on top of that, and you want a little bit of guidance, then checking out the Hadle Dev branch is also a really good way to kind of challenge yourself and uh, and improve and practice um, with taking the kind of code there and using it as a guide and trying to integrate it yourself into this public version. I think that's a really good exercise and something that, uh, that I encourage you to do. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time where we're going to basically be improving that entity API. We'll probably also create like a camera component, move that into the entity component system and try and more or less make this an actual proper ECS demo. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.